playing half naughty. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't get a GM title by beating GMs on Lee Chess. It only comes from, like, slow classical tournaments. Um, okay, so we're playing a, kind of a critical line in Stafford. This is a Jonathan Schrantz magical stockfish crusher variation. So idea F3, H4. Computer gives, like, plus three, but it's fun, especially for bullets. It's nice my opponent's thinking here, too. But the problem is if my opponent plays a move that's not in my prep, then I might be in trouble, but YOLO. I vaguely remember looking at this, actually. I mean... I got to take on h2. I mean, there's g2. Let's take on h2. I'm going to have to check my prep here. <sighs> I mean, rook f1, I have queen h4. Then king d2. But then bishop g4. So king d2, bishop g4. Meanwhile, I'm threatening g2. And we're playing like cutting edge Stafford Gambit theory. So I'd rather not mess this up. Rook here. Thing is, it's probably already losing for me. That's such a cool position, though. Takes a bishop e7 as well. No, let's um, let's start with rook h1 and then go for this move. No, I might be running out of steam, but I'm only down a piece. Oof. Yeah, thing is getting trapped. I have rook h3. Bishop here, I can take, hit the queen first. Still hope. I don't know what a5 does. I should have played queen here, actually. Okay, this does. It gives my rook room. It lines with the king. a5 might discourage king b3. Okay. So rook f2, I have this move. The bishop is pinned. It's such a weird position. D5 I take because there's a pin that way too. And meanwhile, this is a skewer. Oh, and the bishop's hanging. Knight e3 is a really... Oh, wait, what's going on? Takes and takes... Up the exchange somehow. Um, ah, that was a bad move. Let's take that. Okay, I'm up a ton of material. Don't perpet me. I don't think I'm getting perpetted. Wow, what a game. That was a fun game. Stafford Gambit, like cutting edge Leela weird theory.
I'm actually curious how this compares to what I... I anal analyze this at some point. Um, real quick, let's analyze. So I was more prepared for this. Um, I'm sure we can find Jonathan's games in the in the database. Uh, but there's a cool line, uh, rook g1, h takes g3, h takes g3, rook h2, dc5, bishop e6, queen d4. And then this is um, Jonathan Schrantz uh, innovated this, this whole concept, bishop c4. Um, yeah, people should check out the video on, uh, on Jonathan's YouTube channel. Um, so this is one cool line where black gets like a lot of compensation. I'm just curious what we went into. I'm going to real quick, uh, I just have to open up chess base. I went through a phase about a month ago. I was studying like some of the most critical Stafford lines where white just tries and refutes the whole opening, like very much in depth. The line we just went into, uh, Nerditsky doesn't cover in his, uh, in his video. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Jonathan has more thorough prep, but I base this off uh, a few of his games. Um, so this is my prep in chess base. This is what I use to, uh, to prepare things like very, very deeply. And this is not entirely a secret line. Like it's, um, it's known in certain circles. So my opponent, yeah, I have most of the options for white from this position. My opponent, um, oops. Took on g4. I took and then bishop e3. Okay. So takes on g4. H takes g3, bishop here. Ah, so this is one of the critical lines. Um, oh, rook f1 loses a tempo. Wait, did that happen? Oops. Rook f1 does lose a tempo, but my opponent played bishop g1. Oh, wow. It's already like close to equal here. So the, the line I studied should go rook g1. Queen h4 takes, yeah, it's a line where black is down two pieces. And you turn on the engine, engine will say like it's winning. Yeah, it'll say like plus six, but it won't find a productive plan for white. Like it'll say knight a3 or some random move and then rook d8. Only move bishop d4 here. Oh yeah, I think I was analyzing. Yeah, queen a4, black's already winning. So bishop d4. It's a weird position where like both sides are a little bit stuck. We can turn on Leela too. I hope this doesn't crash the whole computer. Um, but Leela will sometimes give different opinions. So I'm, I'm sharing kind of my part of my process with opening preparation, where there are certain types of positions where Stockfish and Leela will differ by a lot. And Leela more understands like long-term ideas or just long-term nature of the position. So it's usually a good sign, like if Leela gives a two point difference in your favor, um, there's some like underlying depth that Stockfish isn't getting. Anyway, this is, this is very high level stuff. Um, doesn't apply to probably most people, but I hope people can still find this interesting. Um, this is just a glimpse of, of how I study openings. And this is not something I don't mem like purely memorize all these lines. I just study to, I, I dig deep to try and search for ideas and, um, and try and identify like the key variations. 
Okay. I still have not broken into the top 10. Oh, here's Mama Dirov. Yeah, a lot of people in the top 10 are still playing too. Hey, Stafford Gamma time. Oh, we had the game earlier. Stafford a lot against C3. My friends. Ah, ha, ha. So much fun seems good. It's so much fun. Yeah. So we're repeating the same line from earlier. Maybe my opponent's prepared now. Uh, yeah, we went into this. Rook F1 loses a tempo. Oh, so opponent looked this up. Wow. Rook G1 best move, and then... I think it's Queen H4, and then I just lose a bishop and then develop. <laughs> like the bishop's hanging. Yeah, so this is exactly the prep I showed earlier on stream. Three hours until I have to be at work going to be a long day today, but it's worth it watching you stream. Mm. I appreciate that. So knight d2. The thing with knight d2, I can castle. I'm just not sure if I should castle or rook d8. I don't think it makes a huge difference. Probably castling. It's a really bizarre position because white's a bit stuck. But I'm also down two pieces. Wait, okay, now I can take. And this is usually the idea when uh, the queen abandons the king like that. Let's go. There's a few lines. I think everything's winning. I'm not sure, though. So the idea is queen h2 here. Just threatening mate. It's so hard to stop. Oh, there's queen here. Ah, but then I can take. Oh, but then takes here queen f1. It's complicated. I'm not seeing the win actually. Oh no, I I see I do see the win. Takes I made in one. I'm still down a rook, but I think it's winning because this is hard to stop. Wow. It's another nice. It's so nice. The Stafford Gambit. And this is like cutting edge. Again, we went straight into the this prepared line I showed earlier in, in chess space. Um, I could reopen chess space to show it again, but... Uh, yeah, I showed this position. I think I showed knight a3 earlier. Like knight a3, rook d8. I guess the difference between... One difference is uh, knight a3 prevents me from castling. But again, um, like Sockfish gives plus five, yeah. It's it's so unusual to uh, like willingly go into a position that's plus five for the opponent. With G2, G2 is not quite winning because Stockfish says so. Also G2, Bishop F2 or King D2. So it's important to just leave the tension and like the fact that the queen and pawn are always aligned with the king it just makes it really awkward to play for white and then there's some issue like king d2 yeah king d2 runs into bishop g4 and then black's winning so again huge thanks to jonathan Schrantz for basically discovering this line he prepared this super extensively to a point where he he was not losing against Stockfish. 